Live, love, Africa. What's your excuse for not coming? Please subscribe. Hello, I'm Guinness the Mirror. <laughs>
I agree. And also those heads and stone heads too. They be leveraging that too. The, the pseudos. Okay. At Turtle Island. What up? Yeah. The pseudos. The, the turtle. I'm from Turtle Island. Those pseudos. Yeah. These statues, they claim, bear physiognomic resemblance to Africans solely based on their broad noses and thick lips. The fact that the statues also resemble Mexico's indigenous people, along with the fact that broad noses and thick lips are not solely black African characteristics, is simply ignored. If these assertions were being made in the reverse by white authors about black African culture, these people would rightfully be castigated for their racist interpretation. Somehow, when it comes to Native Americans, especially if they are ancient and mysterious enough, it is okay to make outlandish claims. The long-running pseudo-historical television program about ancient aliens and ancient peoples is in the same vein. So, in fact, let me let me uh, interject real quick. So, I, I agree with everything this author is saying. All right, because they did the, the, these these racist European scholars did the same thing same thing to us in regards to when we were in Africa in Benin. So, when Europeans came to Benin, not Republic, but Benin City in present-day Nigeria. They saw the, the, the Benin bronzes, right? And they said, there's no way that these bronzes can be... In fact, here goes one right here, Benin bronze. This is what I'm referring to. So when Europeans came to Benin uh, City, they saw these bronzes. And they said, there's no way that these inferior Africans can make these. No way. So they wanted to give credit to aliens. So European so-called scholars... When they saw these statues in Benin, Benin, uh, Benin City, Benin Kingdom, they said, no way these slow, uneducated, inferior Africans, no way they could have created this art. No way. It must have been space aliens that did it. So I, I agree with, and, and, and again, I'm going to read the article, and I'm going to give my commentary at the end, okay? Somehow... When it comes to Native Americans, especially if they are ancient and mysterious enough, it, it's okay to make outlandish claims. Sadly, with this proposition, what the adherents of this unfounded thesis assert is that indigenous peoples of the Americas receive their foundational culture from black Africans. It's not true. It's not true. A belief that effectively robs Native Americans of their cultural patri patrimony. In fact, most of what Wigan et al. state in their piece does not support their claim which they themselves admit is mostly suggestive. That is not how positive claims work. You must have factual facts and not just quotes from secondary sources posing as facts in order to make your case. The entire article is riddled with questionable sources that the authors lean on as primary evidence. However, upon closer examination, the cited evidence uh, are actually quotes from secondary sources that are misinterpreted, noted as suggestive, or have been revealed to be incorrect. It would take an article-length paper to properly demonstrate the numerous errors made by Wigan et al. His name is Wigan et al. He must be one of these Moors, you know, the, the Moors. I'm, I'm going to get into that as well. But let us explore at least one, the extensive use of secondary source, sources as primary sources. For example, here the authors quote Van Sertima, the African presence in the Omic world demonstrated that the African first entered the Western Hemisphere not as chattels, not as property, not as merchandise, not as enslaved people, but as masters of control of their own destinies. Now, let me say this. So you have the story of Abu Bakari. Now, there's really no proof of that story, but there are claims that Abu Bakari, when he left his throne, gave up his throne in the Mali Empire, he sailed and landed in what's present-day Brazil. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but now we can say, I'll say this, that black Africans interacted with Native Americans before the slave trade. I'm okay with that. But to sit here and say that there was a whole, that the Omex and the Mayans and these indigenous Americans, that these were African civilizations, no, that's all pseudo. But I'm going to continue. What evidence are they referring to that Van Sertima made a claim linking Africans to Omex? 
It seems extremely odd to have to say this about an article published in a peer-reviewed journal, but opinions are not facts and therefore not evidence. Simply quoting the opinions of another author does not make that a supporting fact. You must follow up with actual evidence, and that is a key missing element in this entire piece. Now let us consider some of the sources. The authors that Wigan et al. chose to rely on are highly questionable. For instance, for instance I'm Van Sertema, as mentioned above, was soundly refuted, was soundly refuted in the 1990s by, by Matalano et al., Sertema's predecessor. I don't know, what is et al.? Yeah, help me out with that. In the comment section, the et al. I just I keep seeing that. Help me out with that. Sertema's predecessor, Harold G. Lawrence, who kickstarted the modern iteration of black omic hypothesis, had no advanced training in archaeology or history. And in fact, his influential piece, African Explorers of the New World, 1962, The Crisis, introduces him as belonging to a group from Detroit, Michigan called the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. Apparently, that is enough to make him a credible source on the prehistory of Native Americans. And finally, they cite Anu Mbantu, a British-born photojournalist who also does not have advanced training in Mesoamerican indigenous societies. See, this is the issue. This is what's going on in the black community. So we pride ourselves on being the, 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 the father of science. You know, Imhotep, you know, the Africans taught the Greeks science. And, you know, Africans taught the Greeks. You know, Af the Moors taught the, the African Moors taught the Europeans math and science and technology. But then when it comes to present day, we have people who as they say, have no experience in archaeology. We have people who are not doctors, but they, call them, they cannot, you know, explain at all the human body, but they're, they want to call themselves a nutritionist, you know. Everybody wants to just have these internet titles, but don't have the proper training or education. There's a lot of that going on now. A lot of it. They don't want to invest in the proper education. They don't want to invest in the proper training, all right, which costs money. But then they want to go online and call themselves these nutritionists, uh, you know, doctor, this, that, and the other, but you're not really a doctor. You never went to med school. We have a lot of posing going on online. Let me continue. Uh, a British-born photojournalist, that's a big problem. Journalists who, because it's not fair to those people who spent the hours put in the sweat equity, are right, invested, right, into the education, the schooling, and actually earn the title of being a doctor, or earn the title of being an archaeologist, but then we just got people just come out of nowhere and call themselves archaeologists and doctors and the nutritionists and you know, they know everything, they don't, they don't even know, they barely know anything about the human body or makeup or, or whatnot, but they're nutritionists. It's like these fake personal trainers you see online. Everybody now online on Instagram is a personal trainer, but they have no personal training certification. All right. Uh, training in Mesoamerican indigenous societies. Mbatu has written several self-published books with curious titles such as The Ancient Black Hebrews and Arabs, oh, here we go, and The Black Kings of Europe. Sources can either make or break a thesis, and the ones in question here are the kind that usually get flagged during peer review. We certainly agree that the history and legacy of African peoples in the Americas is still not sufficiently taught in schools, but we do children a disservice by advancing opinions as facts. Promoting the idea that the Omic were black is more than simply poor scholarship. It is, I agree. It is an erasure of the accomplishments of indigenous Mexicans, Africa, and Mexico are both home to fascinating civilization. Why do we hate ourselves? I, I, let me, I'm going to give my commentary at the end. Home to fascinating civilizations, each with their own advancements in technology, linguistics, agriculture, and science. When we embrace the pseudo-history of black Omics, we trivialize and marginalize the legacies of both Africans and indigenous Mexicans. 
Africa and Mexico are both home to fascinating civilizations, each within their own advancements in technology, linguistics, agriculture, and science. When we embrace the pseudo-history of black omics, we trivialize and marginalize the legacies of both Africans and indigenous Mexicans. Thus, in light of this major oversight, we ask that the Urban Review Journal retract the article by Wigan et al. and discontinue its promotion of black omics as long time as ethnic studies researchers and educators ourselves, we would prefer to see accurate and far more meaningful scholarship that explores better ways of advancing education among urban youth. Certainly, we can recognize the heritage of Africans and African Americans as well as that of Afro-Mexicans without promoting a distorted, colonialist, and fanciful version of history in the words of Van Sertima himself. You cannot really conceive how insulting it is to Native Americans to be told they were discovered. We agree with Sertima on that point, but we would further add that it is just as equally insulting to be told that someone else gave your ancestors their culture. You cannot counter colonialist thought with colonialist pedagogy. Sincerely, Curly Tilopoyawa, Supervisory Archaeologist, Ruben A. Arellano, History PhD, the Chamali Institute of Mesoamerican Arts. Okay, I'm going to get my, my, you guys, I read the article. I'm going to get my commentary. This is the issue I have. With many, and this is more a black American phenomenon. And just from talking to people, you know, especially like my black family in, in the UK, a lot of it has to do this claiming this identity. You know, it's, it, we go from we are the uh, Asiatic black man to we are black Hebrews, we are the Hebrew Israelites to we are the Egyptians. We completely skip over West Africa. I mean, we completely skip over West Africa. And now we are the indigenous Omecan, Moors, Chickenshaw, Choctaw Indians from Turtle Island. But we completely skip over West Africa, where we come from. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. We are not Asiatic black men. We are not Hebrews. We are not Omecan, Choctaw, Chickenshaw, uh, Moorish Moors from Turtle Island. We are Yoruba. We are Igbo. We are Mende. We are Fon, we are Ashanti, we are Wolof. Okay, and when I sit with these people and I say, hey, um, are you guys the Asiatic black men? They look at me like, huh? Are you guys the Hebrew Israelites? They say, huh? No, we are Wolof, we are Yoruba, we are Igbo. Now you have some Igbo who claim to be Hebrews. But that only started during the Biafran War because some Igbos felt that their, uh, I guess the adversity they were facing was similar to the adversity that the Jews were facing or Hebrews or whatever. But outside of that, the majority of Igbos don't, they're like, no, those, the ones that claim that are crazy. They're just, they're crazy. So what, I mean, what is it? Why do we skip over West Africa? Why do we... Like completely, why do we want to be, why do we want, why do we want to claim everything else except for our legacy in West Africa? I traveled up and down West Africa. West Africa is the most beautiful, interesting, fascinating. I mean, West Africa is home to the most beautiful, fascinating, beautiful Civiliza civilizations ever known to man. But again, we want to be Asiatic black men, Hebrews, Kemet, we're from Kemet, Kemetans, Egyptian Kemetans, completely skip over West and Central Africa. We just skip over it. And then we are the indigenous Omecan, Moors, uh, 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 Israelites um, from Turtle Island, Choctaw, Chickasaws, from Turtle Island, and the slave trade happened in reverse. And again, it's, this is a black American issue. I don't know why, because I was asking. So in the UK, they found, I guess, this prehistoric, uh, 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 it's called Ch Cheddar Man, Cheddar Man. This prehistoric 
um, fossil of a, of a human being or whatever you want to call it. They call it Cheddar Man. And so they did like a, a image of Cheddar Man. And Cheddar Man had dark skin. Right. And so I asked my European friend, my, my black UK friends, like, hey, are there people walking around the UK claiming to be Cheddar Man? Because this Cheddar Man had dark skin. They said no. And they said, we said no because we know exactly where we're from. We know we come from either West Africa or we come from the islands. We know where we come from. See, black people in America have been so disconnected from Africa that they have just completely picked up these other identities instead of just claiming their West Africanness. Again, black people, black Americans have been so disconnected from West Africa that they just absorb, they just want to claim all these other identities. Asiatic black man, Hebrew, Kemet, completely skip over West Africa. I'm an indigenous, Native American, Moorish, Moor, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Omec from Turtle Island. It's okay. Listen, it is okay to be West African. It is okay to be Mende. It is okay to be Yoruba. It is okay to be Igbo. It is okay to be Fulani. It is okay to be Wolof. It's okay. It is okay. But yeah, but I asked my friends from the UK, I said, hey, are there black people in the UK walking around claiming to be Cheddar Man? I guarantee you, if they found a Cheddar Man, the same Cheddar Man in America, you have black folks. See, I told you he's indigenous to America. I told you, see, see, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. They will use Cheddar Man as proof to prove that black people are in America first. And they have nothing to do with West Africa. And what I'm saying, it is okay to be West African. Again, look up Cheddar Man. So they did like a, a drawing of what Cheddar Man would have looked like back during prehistoric times. You know, I guess when they take the fossil, they could, you know, do uh, create or come up with an image or drawing or of what Cheddar Man would have looked like. And it was dark skin, like skin darker than mine or my, my complexion. And I just know. I just know the way we think over here in America, some of us pseudo scholars, scholars here in America, the way we think, we're like, yeah, see, that's proof. We, we are the Cheddar Man. I mean, we have, I mean, just going up and down West Africa, just the culture we have. I mean, just the, we have our own spiritual systems, but we just don't find value in them. And I don't understand why we do not find value in our own systems but we find value in everyone else's system. I just, I don't get it. We have our own rules of conduct. We have our own religion or spirituality. But we just, we don't find any value in it. But instead, we want to be uh, Asiatic black men, Hebrew Israelites. We want to be from Kemet. And then we want to be uh, uh, Omecan, Moorish Moors, Chickasaw Choctaws from Turtle Island. And I just want to say, black people, it is okay to be West African or Central African. It is okay. It is okay. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Like, share, and subscribe. Go to DynastyMirror.com. Until next time, family, Dynasty Mirror Search for Huru. Peace. We are headed to Ibadan. Ibadan, Nigeria from Lagos. Again, we're headed to Ibadan. Looking forward to it. We're gonna meet some uh, black American expats there. Can't wait to go. But we're on our way, so we're going. Peace.